Hey, good evening, guys. It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy. Got a different little subject we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Carl, KD5 KWT, one of our hammerheads, sent me a link to a video from uh, DX Commander Callum. And uh, it was a pretty interesting video, and it kind of got me to thinking about how I am the way I am with HF radios after my experience in the hobby today. So I'm going to do a little take on that. I'm not, I don't want you to think I'm copying him because there's no way I could copy what he says, but he made an argument against SDR radios and he didn't really, let me rephrase it. He didn't make an argument against them. He just said why he did not actually prefer them. And he made a lot of sense and it's things that like I have talked about in the past about people telling you what's the best radio, the best receiver you can hear and all of that. A lot of it depends on you and your hearing and what you're used to. Uh, and I didn't realize this because I don't have an SDR radio. The newest radio I got is this 897 here. Hang on a minute. Let me start this while I'm thinking about it. Is this 897? It does have some DSP digital signal processing in it, 16 year old technology, but it does have some in it. Um, but his take was that SDR radios are using algorithm and whatever that's in the computer, the radio, the computer part of the radio does that and is actually filtering out the signal so you you may not be hearing the actual signal that you would like hear it in analog version. You're hearing a cleaned up SDR modified computer version of it. He claimed he didn't like that because he said he could understand call sign stuff better like that. Kind of got me thinking about my career and where I, how I like radios to work. Now, I hope I can make sense with this and don't anybody think I'm copying him because I'm not because I don't have an SDR radio. But you take the first radio I ever had was uh, one of these 701s, like sitting right here on my bench. It only got a noise blanker and a pass band tuning in. Never used a noise blanker. I would just listen so I could hear the signal, hear all the signal. And it that way you can get the call sign and things like that. That's what my ears were tuned to. I never had a radio had a lot of filtering in it. So I never did use them. And that's what I got used to. And that's why I still operate today. You take this Kenwood 940 here. It's a contest grade flagship radio back in the day, full of filters, all kinds of filtering on it. But you can tune the filtering to suit you, to your ear, or leave all the filters in the neutral position like I do, and you can go from there. So I guess what I'm trying to point out for new guys that are torn on radios, on what to buy, and again, you ask, what's the best HF radio? 99% of the hams are going to say, Brand A is the best, and that's Brand A sitting on their bench. It gets back to what you're used to, your age, how good your hearing is. And like this Callum guy, the DX commander, is a musician. Cody has got youth, and he's an aspiring musician. Tim's been a musician for well over 20 years. They all hear things differently than somebody like me or say Jeff does. Uh, we worked in a high noise environment for years and we hear things kind of the same. We both don't hear good, but we both usually run these radios 
just the way they come out of the box. I don't use RF gain. I don't use squelch when I'm on HF. I want to hear everything. It helps me to pick out the call sign, the station, and things like that better. So here's where new hams have to really take their time and make it a decision on the radio. And I don't like to tell people how to spend their money at all. Come here, ham radio cat. Come here, baby. Come on. Everybody needs to see. Well, run off. Come here. We'll go on. Uh, I don't like to tell people how to spend their money. But I can correlate what I'm about to say to my career in firearms, hunting, shooting, reloading, amateur gunsmithing, gun trader back in the day, things like that. And I have spent way more money on that hobby when I didn't go talk to tell my wife about that than I have ever spent on ham radio. But Take reloading, for instance. I have a lot of people ask me about getting into reloading. And in today's environment, people want fast as they can, quick as they can, the latest and the greatest. So most of them want to buy a high-dollar progressive reloader. And most of them, if they don't take the time to understand how powder flows through different powder measures, how different powders flow, and some doesn't flow through powder measures. You have to manually measure them. These guys get disheartened with the hobby real quick and get out of it because, A, they're not producing decent reloads, or they've realized that they're in over their head with buying the latest and the greatest right off the bat without learning the process first. I can kind of apply that the ham radio and buying your first HF rig. And again, I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to dissuade you from buying a brand new radio or anything like that. I just want you to think. You take somebody who has zero experience in communications. Really, zero experience in communications, never talked on a radio. All they've learned is they want to get in ham radio and they got an unlimited budget. And they got to learn with whatever radio they buy right off the bat. Okay. Hey, you got an unlimited budget. You want to buy the latest and the greatest and all the bells and whistles? Go right ahead. You'll learn with that. You may not ever know the difference between an SDR generated signal with digital signal processing and digital noise reduction versus an old analog radio. You may not ever have to learn that. But if you take somebody like me, for instance, I'm not an electronics whiz by no means. I can make cables up. I can do minor repairs, but I don't work on circuit boards. Uh, but I have been involved with voice radio all basically all my life. Started out as a CBer, got in the military, always involved with communications in the military. Public service, I was always involved with communication for public service on the fire department. And I've been a licensed ham since 1991. But all the gear I've ever used has been older analog gear. And I'm used to the way that signal sounds. I've turned the digital signal processor and the digital noise reduction on at 897. I turned it off and I didn't like the way it sounds. I felt like it was filtering out too much of what I was really wanting to hear to where I could understand call signs better, especially if you're working DX and you're trying to understand foreign stations with foreign accents. All right. That's what I'm getting at. I want you guys on HF and I want you to make a good decision because there's nothing that turns anybody off on this hobby worse than anything is if they think they've bought the wrong radio right out of the get-go and they may not have the budget to replace it. That's why I urge you to study what you're wanting to get into, what you're looking for, and learn from there. The very best thing you can do if you got possibly go to a ham radio operator's house and listen to their gear. Go to field day events. Go help a guy work POTA sometimes where you can hear what different radios sound like. 
Personally, I have zero experience with SDR radio. I shouldn't even probably even be talking about them, and I am certainly not trying to knock any of you from buying one. But DX Commander's video did make me realize something that I had never realized, that you're going to have a difference in the sound of the signal through an SDR radio using those algorithm and the computer-generated filtering and all that that's got in it versus an older analog radio, even if you buy the 940 with all the bells and whistle filtering in it, those are still manual filters that you have control over to change. So again, I want you on the air. I want you to buy some good gear to start with. And there's nothing wrong if you've got the money to buy a Top of the line rig right off the bat, top of the line, feed line, antenna and everything. I have no problem with you doing that. But if you're on a budget and you don't, maybe don't have that much experience in listening to a radio, I highly recommend an older analog radio to start with. That way you get experience listening to signals understanding call signs and how to tune them in to get it in where you can understand everything and get on frequency when you go to try to make a contact. It's really aggravating when you're trying to work a DX station and people are blasting over you, trying to hear them, trying to work the guy, and you're just trying to understand his call sign. I've had that happen to me several times where I'm trying to, I had a pretty good idea it's a country I wanted to get. But I didn't get all the call sign. I can kind of tell by the accent where they might be at. And you have to listen. Sometimes I've listened 20 minutes before I've figured out exactly where the call sign's coming from and where the guy's located at. Then I'll decide whether I want to work him or not. But that gets back to the receiver or the radio you're using, whether it's SDR or analog. You've got to learn what you want to learn right off the bat. And I highly recommend you walk it in this hobby before you learn to run in it. It'll save you some time down the road. It don't hurt to buy an older radio to start with. But again, if you got the money and you want to go whole hog right off the bat, go for it. I have no problem with that. I just want you on the air. I want you to keep your ticket active, and I want you to have a good time in this hobby. That's all I'm trying to point out. The differences in possibly an older analog radio, what you may hear versus what you're going to hear through an SDR filtered radio. The older analog radios that are working correctly, you may hear a lot of background noise. You're going to hear noise, but you're going to hear the pure signal. And then that's where you get the opportunity to try to filter it either with manual filtering in the radio or whatever. I hope this makes sense, guys. I've, sometimes I struggle to find a subject matter late in the day, and I've been feeding cows, thinking about this, and rehashing it over in my head. Callum has a really good video on that, and I highly recommend you check it out, DX Commander, and watch that. And he makes, he makes some really good points. But just remember this. When you're asking questions about what's the best HF radio to get, Take in consideration who's answering you and where they're getting their answers from. That's all I ask. Like I've said, 95% of the best radios you get told is the best is whatever the guy's got on the bench in front of you. So take your time, do some listening, and make the best decision you can for your shack. That's all I'm trying to get, get a point across here. Guys, I appreciate everybody who subscribed to the channel. Uh, the usual links, uh, Broker Circuit Ranch, Circle 6 Mail Drop, and Door Planner will be in the description of this video. Uh, MRG Labs, the first slide you'll see, MTC. They haven't got their new website up yet, but they say they got some big things coming there for the first year. Got some uh, more ham fest info following all the slides at the end. I plan to be at Cowtown on the 17th. And I'm going to try my best to go to Hugo on the 31st to Choctaw County. That's their first 
tailgate ham fest and over here at choctaw county amateur radio club over in hugo so i'm gonna do my best to be there also there's a slide there will be one slide for mrg labs about broken bow on mccurtain county amateur radio club's tech class they're giving in january so any of y'all in the four states there and interested in getting your tech class tech license should be a good time to get you a class in to help you get your license Yes, I appreciate everybody enjoying listening to me and Old Ham Radio Cat. It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy 73.